I am super excited to have Milana back on the podcast again. Milana, welcome back to the Organized 365 podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Let, uh, we talked to you last June and you were entering your junior year at Miami University. I believe you've just finished that up. Is that true? Yes. You know, we barely made it, but I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad we, we made it through. <laughs> Quite the year. So how was your year? You're getting ready to go into a new internship with IBM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to this summer? Well, my year was uh, challenging. It was definitely challenging, <laughs> but it was fun. I learned a lot about myself and how I could grow in different areas of improvement. So I worked a lot on that and I leaned a lot on, you know, the people that were in my inner circle. So that was good. Um, and I definitely am going into this next summer phase feeling excited to learn. I just want to soak up all the knowledge um, in regards to marketing with IBM, because that's where I'll be working in. Um, and I can't wait to truly just get my feet wet within the tech industry. And I'm, I'm grateful. So I'm ready, you know, to just soak it all up, take advantage of all the opportunities, um, and, and have some great learning experiences. Well, you are a sponge that is able to absorb a lot. I mean, you're I'm very, trying. Active, very active in your college life. Uh, you were done with your internship with us at the end of the summer, but our director of marketing, Emily, was like, hey, Milana, hey, Milana, hey, Milana. And you were like, sure, I can do that project. I can do that project. I can do that project. And you kept doing um, random projects for us over the school year. We just want to keep our, our it was tentacles mutual. in with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was definitely mutual. I was tapping on uh, my marketing director, your marketing director as well. And I was like, hey, can I do this? Or hey, do you need help here, here, here? So, you know, it was mutual. We were working together. It was a team effort. Yeah, we just like, you fit so well in our team and in our culture. And it's just so awesome to be able to give you some of the projects that otherwise like wouldn't get done around here. So one of those projects that we came up with this spring is I've never really ever been able to have a kid go through the kids program and give us feedback. And I know like nobody ages 16 to 25 wants to be called a kid. Let's be clear. I'm well aware we're working on changing the terminology of that, but you did like, like, I just wanted you to go through the launch program. You actually went through the entire kids program, like from birth to age 25. What did yes. you think? I was honestly in shock after I went through all of it. I was just in shock about how much information and how obviously this is going to be a key word here, but how organized everything was. There were so many things that I hadn't thought about that were essential to just productivity and life and learning and being able to function in a space that I wasn't able to articulate and I didn't think about, but now being cognizant of those things, I feel like my life is completely like changed and i'm so like excited and grateful that i was able to look at it from both perspectives as someone who is in the 16 to 25 age range but also as someone who was looking at the kids program as well and trying to put myself back in you know my little sister's shoes or my shoes when i was that age like would i have done this or would i would have the time to sit and watch these videos or would i would I have a, like a friend do it with me just looking at that from different perspectives and trying to like wear different hats was so cool. And it's been awesome ever since, because I'm, you know, mentioning to my sister, once I'm mentioning to my friends, like, Hey, did you do this? You look at this little printable. Like it's been cool to like learn the knowledge and then kind of pass it along as well. Well, you're, would you say you're an organized person? I thought so. Until yes. I was at the launch binder. I would say you're an organized person. Like if I were to say, what is an organized college student look like? I, there would be a little picture of Milana <laughs> carrying her binder. And I would imagine that you are organized. So, but you were really surprised when you went through, especially the launch portion, probably not the kid portion because your bedroom is probably organized, but you were like really happy with all of the things that were in there. I was shocked. I was just taken back and I was calling my friend. I told my mom <laughs> because I was just taken back at, how everything you needed to be an adult and things that you wouldn't necessarily think about or things like your mom does for you, your dad does for you is all in one binder and you're able to have that. So you feel so much more prepared 
as not only a person, but just as an adult to be able to function as an adult in society, especially within this age range where you're trying to find your identity. It's just that much more empowering to go ahead and take risks and and be yourself. Yeah. You know, like I think back to when I was in school, did they teach you in high school, like balancing a checkbook and stuff like that? Do they still do that? Um, it's not an essential credit, but they do at my high school, they had a class you could take. It was like, um, personal finance and you could take that. Um, but it wasn't like a requirement. So only certain people that were taking, that were making an effort or had room in their schedules to do that could. Yeah. And so like you said, like, this is like hashtag adulting, like everything you need for adulting, which I believe is trademarked. So we're not going to use that, (laughs) but it's basically life skills. Like, Mm -hmm. and I don't know how you learn these anymore. Like, how do you naturally learn life skills, especially now? Okay. According to the pandemic, we were all home. I mean, I think a lot of people learn life skills that wouldn't have learned them because we were all home. And so Mm -hmm. there was a lot more like, Hey, let me show you how to do this. Cause there's like nothing else we can do. Mm -hmm. But I think especially if you have a jam packed high school schedule and you might have a job or you might, you know, be doing sports or extracurriculars, like you jam pack so much in there, but a lot of times the head of household will still take care of, like, you'll learn to do your own laundry maybe, or make a meal here or there, but you're not responsible for making the meals, doing the car maintenance, all of that stuff that's being taken care of. And you made an interesting point. You went to Miami university and lived in a dorm. And now you are, I can't remember what it's called. What is your job in the dorm? A resident assistant. Okay. Yeah. An RA. And so you still live in the dorm, but like, you're, you're like taking care of the people in the dorm. I didn't even think about this. You're like, I don't have cleaning and cooking responsibilities, even in college, because I maintain dorm living as a, as did I, I was in a dorm for three years at Miami as well. Um, I didn't realize that that again is like, you don't have to learn it yet. Mm -hmm. And then when you do, like, I look at my kids who are living at home with me, but they are both done with college, moving on to their hashtag adult life. And they're not doing meal planning and making the meals and like, or doing the cleaning, they're cleaning their rooms, but they're not cleaning the house. I'm still doing that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, it's not until you find yourself in your own dwelling one day, a condo, Mm -hmm. an apartment, a house. And you're like, oh, I have to do all this. And you don't even like, that's when you go who did clean the house at our house? <laughs> like, you don't right. realize how it's getting done. Like it just kind of gets done. Right. Yeah. One of the things that I was, I already told you this when we had our conversation about my feedback, but one of the things that I was like, oh my gosh, I have not really thought about that was just the grocery list. Like Mm -hmm. uh, when you're a young adult, you're trying, you're trying to figure out what lifestyle you're trying to live. So am I going to have like a plant-based lifestyle and how do I prep for that? And you have options for that in the launch binder, but a lot of the things about just what everyday snacks I need or what staples am I refrigerator or my pantry do I need it's good to have something that's tangible that you can write down on and have reference to because otherwise we just would be winging it in the grocery store and buy everything that's would get us out of our budget that we just prepared in our launch binder like oh wait I'm right <laughs> I mean I remember as a teenager and in college and as a newly married person and let's be clear again now um most of my income goes to fast food fast food and snacks like, it's bad. I, I already want- told you <laughs> because I don't want to cook. Now there was a period of time, like from the time the kids were like two years old until they were like 12, where I cooked almost all of our meals. But before and after that, like most of my disposable income goes to fast food and carry out. It's really bad, Lisa. I mean, it's gotten to the point where if I'm not even at the dining hall, I count like my money, the amount of money I have in increments of Chipotle bowls. I'm like, okay, how many Chipotle bowls <laughs> yes. can I get with this amount of money? So it's it's bad, but you know, you're living and you're learning. And I love that I have a resource that I can like prep and plan and feel prepared when I do move into my own place, which is going to be here soon, uh, post-grad. So I'm trying to figure that out. But um, I think it's good to have a reference point and have just a starting point of the basic things you need. Like you're going to need water. You're going to need snacks. You're going to need fruits, veggies, all these different things. And you're like, Oh, wait, I never really thought about that. Cause I can just pick it up at the dining hall to go or things like that. So, yeah. Okay. So we are talking about the organized 365 launch binder. It's just a white lattice binder and inside of it, it has a whole bunch of 
printables. Now I have mine. <laughs> Milana's showing hers too. We are in a video as well on a podcast. I have mine in sheet protectors just so it's easier to flip through them. They don't come in sheet protectors if you're watching this on YouTube. And then we have these different categories that we're going to divide the binder into that are blue, red, and green. And we're going to go category by category. I'll talk about how I came up with the system. And then Milana is going to give feedback as to how she's using this today as a, uh, well, actually you are, you're already a senior, right? In college. It's it surreal. Over. Yes. Senior <laughs> now, rising senior. <laughs> senior. Senior in college, how you're using it. And then you've gotten feedback from people in your dorm and people in your hometown about this system. So I would love to hear. So let's get started. When I first started this binder, um, my kids are almost 20 and 21 years old. And you know that kids like to learn from other people other than their parents. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, mm -hmm. what information do my kids need to know in order to be adults? Like in order to live outside of my house and do their own thing and specifically really simple things. So let's just start with money. Cause that's what people always think about money first. Like mm -hmm. how do you make a budget? And in my family, I have always used credit. Like we have a mortgage, we buy our houses on credit. I love Dave Ramsey. Like I aspire to be a hundred percent debt free. I've never been a hundred percent debt free. So I've used uh, other people's money <laughs> to leverage my uh, house that I have today. And when you graduate from college and you start in a job, no matter what job it is, like, you know, my kids were looking at what jobs can they get that would produce an income to allow them to live the way we do. And I was like, that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. FYI, yeah, um, sure. because we're old. <laughs> so that's why we live the way we do. And also we're two incomes. Like Greg and I got married young and before we had kids. And so for our kids, they're not married. So when they move out on their own, they have one income for moving out on your own. And it goes really, really fast. So if there isn't enough money to fund like all the basics that you would do in like a basic budget, how do you figure out a budget? And so when I was thinking about my own kids, and I was thinking about them possibly living on their own for quite a long time, which is different than what I did. I got married right away. Um, I realized that really a budget is more like a funnel than it is like this plan of how you're going to use all these resources because you just don't know how much is going to be coming in at any one time. Mm -hmm. And then I prioritized every expense that you have based on what you have to have. So in our budget, I start with, uh, and I'll find the page. I start with at the top, you have to live somewhere. <laughs> so you have to have rent. And along with rent, you're going to need to pay insurance, gas, water, electric, and internet. So basically you need a place to live. The second thing you're going to need is food. <laughs> so you need grocery, possibly fast food and restaurants. And to be honest, for most 16 to 25 year olds that have not landed a full-time job, I don't think the money's going to make it much further than that. Now, if you're living at home or you're living in a dorm that is part of your college loan or your parents are paying for, then you're going to be able to start funding further down in this funnel. Next in the funnel is anything related to a car. After that is anything related to loans, related to school or credit card. After that is your phone. After that is clothing, then grooming, then household, and then entertainment. So this is what the budget looks like. And what I realized was teenagers fund the funnel upstream. <laughs> Teenagers. Yes, yes. This is exactly what I surmised. And then you can tell me what you think. So as a 16, you know, I started babysitting at the age of 12. I was a great babysitter. I went out, I got a lot of jobs. I had some money coming in from babysitting. So I funded my funnel backwards through entertainment, fast food, clothing, and that was it. I didn't pay for my car. I didn't pay for real food. I didn't pay for rent. And so when I graduated from college, and I decided to live in Cincinnati instead of Akron. My parents were like, that's fine. We cut you off. <laughs> like, like, we will not send you pizza money or anything, <laughs> which is fine. Most adults don't get their parents funding them. I, that makes sense. But I chose not to move back home. And I was like, oh, I can't even afford to do laundry. I didn't have any money. I eat peanut butter and jelly. And I took my laundry over to Greg's house to do it because I couldn't afford like coin laundry because I had, after paying rent, and luckily my car, my parents paid for the car. So all I had to pay for was gas and they still paid for my insurance. I still didn't have any money. Like, I don't know how people do it because money does not go very far. That's when I realized, oh, everything I used to spend my money on, I don't have money for. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're completely right. I feel like when I was at home before I moved in, into college, I definitely was like thinking about what, where can I go out to eat with my friends, the entertainment, let's go to the movies, go to like the roller skating rink, things like that. But also when I moved to college, it was kind of the same pattern, but just in a different way. So I'm like, how am I going to make sure I pay for my Spotify, my Netflix, and then I can go ahead and go like with my little um, going out to eat if I, you know, have enough money for that or grooming, things like that. But it definitely is backwards right now because of the living situation that I have with the, the dormitory providing that shelter for me right now. So you're completely right with that. <laughs> I th- And I think it just, because like the messages I heard, and you tell me what messages you heard about money are, you should have a budget. You should try to work from cash. I didn't hear any message other than that. <laughs> like, so, and then when you get out of college, like you don't earn a lot of money. I, I don't care if you're going to be a doctor, you make no money when you get out of college to begin with. Like until you get some experience, the checks don't start coming in and you, you live on very, very little. Yeah. I mean, I was always taught about a budget, but it was more so the concept of prioritizing work first, play later. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I listened? I don't know. But, you know, I was always taught um, that you get your actual priorities, you know, set first. My parents would make me pay for my phone bill starting out. So like, okay, you know, you just got paid for this babysitting gig because I babysit as well. Um, Best job ever. Yeah. Before I turned 16, (laughs) I was babysitting and still during that time, I babysat as well. But it was like, okay, you got this money. So first you're going to go ahead and my family are... Christian. So we're like, okay, here's the money for tithes first. That's the first thing that Mm -hmm. you do. And then after that, it's like, okay, are you paying for your bills? And then what you have left, you can go ahead and play, play with and, and live your life with. So that has been kind of like a staple in regards to prioritizing and like you prioritize what you actually need first, and then you can go ahead and get your little spoils here and there. Um, but I think it kind of got lost in the backwards funnel when I moved away. (laughs) (laughs) So we do have giving at the very top. So if that's something that you want to do, or that's your belief system, you could do that. If it's not, you just jump right down to rent after that. When Joey and I sat down and we did his budget and he was like, mom, I keep going negative. I keep going negative because my kids use debit cards. They don't have credit cards. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I started with a credit card right away. Um, And they're living at home. So I mean, like really how much do we possibly need? Uh, Joey has his own car payment, own insurance, own gas. Like he is taking on a lot of responsibility and he wants to move out. And so he's got a goal for that, but all of his money is going like, like we're swiping the card, like we're playing the lottery or something. I'm like, Joey, there are pages and pages and pages of transactions per month. He goes, I know, right? And I'm like, yeah. So one of them was automatic withdrawal from subscriptions. Like these random subscriptions that you have, that's really getting 20 year olds right now. That was not something that was a thing when I was establishing my first budget. So that's one thing to look at. Like what subscriptions do you have coming out on a regular basis? And then also it helped Joey when we were like, okay, here's how much spending money you have per paycheck. And then I divided that by the 14 days before he got the next paycheck. So instead of thinking I've got a couple of hundred dollars, it's like, you have $20 a day. He's like, Whoa, what? Wow. Yes. I was like, yes. And I was like, that is for food, gas, entertainment, fun. He's like, Oh my gosh. Like I spend that in the drive through for one meal. I was like, exactly. That's why you keep going negative. And so now he eats at home. <laughs> He's like eating the meal. Now, He's so right. excited. He's like, mom, you're making dinner. Thank you so much, mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He's making peanut butter and jelly. Like he's realizing like, okay, I have disposable income, but only so much disposable income. Mm-hmm. What has worked really well for Abby is she cashes her checks. Like she, mm. she gets her checks in cash and then she spends cash because you know, any transactions that you make from Friday night until Monday morning, don't process until Monday or Tuesday on your debit card. And that really messes people up a lot too, because they're not realizing that those transactions are pending. Whenever you get gas often, it'll be like two days later that that actually runs through your credit card, uh, your debit card. And so if you are 
like nobody balances a checkbook anymore. I didn't even bother teaching my kids. But when they log on to their app, if they see that they have money in the bank account, they forget that there's a pending transaction from an online transaction or a gas station or whatever. And so on Tuesday money, Tuesday morning, all of a sudden their account will be much lower than they thought because of all their weekend spending. That's another thing that really tends to trip people up who are not used to balancing a checkbook like I am. Especially with, um, I'm not sure about Joey and Abby, but I'm definitely an Amazon Prime user. So Amazon Prime, like I'm pretty sure it doesn't charge you until they actually ship it. So you can be like, oh, okay. And then you can just forget that you placed a shipment. And then all of a sudden, like two Mm -hmm. days later, when your item has shipped, you're like, oh, wait, but I just spent X, Y, and Z on, you know, Chipotle or at a drive-thru or things like that. So one of the things that I always like think about um, whenever I do like a purchase online is I try to give myself like a timeline in regards to like, okay, I made this purchase. Let's wait, you know, this amount of days until it ships. And then you can go and like, that's when you can really tell how much you're going to have um, because those delayed kind of inbox or bank account hits definitely hit hard when you mm-hmm. think that you have more than you do, especially in like our generation's culture of instant gratification. We're thinking that everybody's on our instant time, but the banks take whatever time they want because they're the banks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you can see just in this one conversation, like I I think we've unpacked a whole bunch of things that are especially relevant to 20 year olds and how they deal with money. And I, if you know of other resources that are talking about these specific things, I would love for you to share that information with me so that we can include those resources in our launch program and point people to other resources, especially for 20 year olds that are just getting established in their life. Like how do you create a modern day budget? Mm -hmm. All right. The other things that are related to finance inside of the binder are not sexy. They're just more like, what do you have to know? Like, you need to know your own social security number. You need to know your driver's license number. You need to have a bill payment record. Things like that are more um, commonplace. You'll hear about those other places. I know both of my kids, I taught them how to put their social security number in their phones so they could find that information. You need your driver's license number now when you file your IRS taxes each year. I don't know if you know Mm -hmm. that, but that will be important when you do that. And obviously you have your driver's license with you, so you can just look it up. But things like that, like getting that financial information out of your parents' head if they have it and into yours as you move into your uh, independent adult life. Anything else about money? Money cars, electronics, you know, that financial piece that stood out to you other than the budget? Um, It had a little bit about tax forms that I thought was helpful as well, because a lot of times when you have those younger jobs, like especially when you're first starting out with 16, um, the tax thing, either it doesn't really apply to you because you don't make enough or somebody helps like walk you through it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I liked that the launch finder specifically had things in regards to tax form because those are kind of scary, but also we're able to have it in a tangible way rather than if we were to automate it um, and do it through some online resource. If we didn't want to go to like an H&R block or some sort of consultation. Yeah. Speaking of scary, you said the medical section was scary to you. Mm, I mean, Yes. I'm not going to lie. The medical section, I was like, oh my gosh, because I just don't think about it that often. I'm going to flip to it. Cause I actually, I actually, when I first said, I was like, oh my gosh, like I haven't thought about my immunization records. I haven't right. thought about like different coverage plans or anything like that. So it was kind of like, this is something that I haven't thought about in a long time. And also too, the medical information sheet of like just your different contacts as well if something were to happen to you as well I was like oh I have not thought about this in a long long time but one thing that I instantly had a conversation with my mom about was just like family records when that form I was like okay that is so essential that you don't really think about because like okay like I'm fine or why does my back hurt or you know do I need to go and get a mammogram things like that are something that you know you think about for a little bit when you're at your checkup 
but when you become an adult, you're not really thinking about, okay, do I have, does my family have history of this, this, and this, and having that on file and writing it down really helps solidify that in your mind. So you're cognizant when you're making your everyday choices. Yeah. And you know, I transitioned my kids to adult doctors in the last couple of years. And I went to those doctors because there's medical history that I wanted to share. And, you know, the COVID vaccine just came out, both my kids, they're adults, they made their own decisions about, you know, when and if they were going to get that vaccine. And that is, you know, as a parent, especially if your child has had medical needs, you're so used to playing that role of, all right, the prescription is ready, make this appointment, do this thing. And to pass all of that over to your kids uh, is a lot. So inside of here, we have the adult one page medical information. This is mm -hmm. what you would take to any new doctor. This medical health history, which is what Milana was talking about, like your childhood illnesses, any conditions you've had in the past that have been resolved, any treatments that have worked or not worked, um, your family medical history, all of the different doctors, like you don't realize, like as a girl, <laughs> you have a girl doctor, and then you have your regular doctor, and then you have your dentist, and you might have an orthodontist, and you might have a psychiatrist. And optometrist. You have, yeah, all kinds of doctors, so many doctors. Medications that you've taken in the past are usually important, so a full medication tracker. And then, like you said, that immunization record as you go into different jobs. Abby just started a job at a daycare center. They want the immunization record back from school. So all of that information is important. Now, uh, both of my kids take regular medication. Joey does it in a pill dispenser and he can fill his own pill dispensers. And we used something for Ab Abby that I've mentioned on Instagram. It is not free. It's called Hero, H-E-R-O. And it's this big, it looks like this big robot <laughs> and you fill it full of all the different medications and it individually dispenses them and texts her phone that they're ready and then reminds her to take them. And it also keeps track of when she takes them. And then she can make updates in the phone if the um, prescriptions have changed. So she's pregnant right now. We have to take her off of a bunch of medications and change the dosages of a bunch of medications. She does that all 100% independently now. Goes, picks up the prescriptions, fills it up, does it. I mean, it's <laughs> great. She like added her prenatal in there. She's like, I added the prenatal mom. So it's hey, all she's on there. it. Her mom Dude, instincts are already kicking in. And it's like, I want to say it's $50 a month maybe for this machine, but it is peace of mind for me. It's like I outsource my worry of the pills to this machine and it is covered under HSA. So we use our HSA money to pay for this machine. And it has been the bridge between my filling pills dispensers and saying, did you take your pills? Did you take your pills to this machine doing it where Abby is hundred percent independent in her pills and nobody can get to them. Like it's really easy to unlock it when you need to, but now she's going to have a baby. So the baby can't unlock where the pills are and they'll just dispense at one time. And that's been great peace of mind for us. Uh, I think it would be great if you are in a caregiving situation as well for someone that you cannot be in their house and you want to set this up for them. Uh, that would, I think it would be a great, um, a great solution. I can hook it up to my phone as well and get all the notifications if I want. I don't, but I can. So if you're like, I want to know if mom took her medicine, you would be able to do that with this hero thing. That's awesome. I have not think, heard of that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's advertised me on Instagram and I buy things <laughs> that are advertised to me on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Multiple things a week. Let's just say I, I'm an impulse buyer. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're definitely alike in that realm. Can't lie. I'm trying Who's to work not? on it. I'm like, working on it. Had impulse. That's terrible. Um, so yeah, the medical section is really like when you don't feel good, you need it. And when everything's going fine, you're like, eh, I, I can let it wait. I remember when Joey was sick up at school, um, we thought he had strep throat. He was two hours away. I could have driven there if I needed to, but he was living independently on his own. And so I went to, I sent him to the CVS minute clinic. He went over there, did everything on his own. Um, and then when Abby got this job at the daycare center, she got it Thursday night. And they said, if you can get all of this stuff done on Friday, you could start on Monday. And one of the things was a physical and she needed to get a vaccine and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I made an appointment and two hours later, we were at that CVS minute clinic and they did the vaccine and they did the physical and they did the whole thing. I'm telling you. I really am liking the CVS Minute Clinic. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I haven't used the Minute Clinic because I am very particular with my doctors and things like that. Yeah. Um, because I feel like 
I don't know. I like to have that, that trust within my different experiences, but I'm trying to find a new way. I think I definitely will try the minute clinic here soon, but my doctor, my primary care doctor just broke up with me because I'm aging oh. out. So she's like, you're aging out. You're going to have to find an adult one. And I was like, oh, I can't believe you're breaking up with me during this time in my life. Like, how could you leave me? But you stuck in there quite a while. Yeah, I did. She's like, you you know, like you're actually, yeah, she's like, it's been time. You know, you just turned 21. I'm like, but you're breaking up with me. I don't know how I feel. So (laughs) yeah, the minute click is definitely some, something that Mm. I will be taking part in here soon. Yeah. Both my kids have adult internal medicines, primary care doctors, but I'm telling you when your ear hurts or your throat hurts and there it's like Friday at three, I'm not waiting till Monday. Like, right. Let's, let's get the test for the UTI now right. <laughs> and find out well, we can let the primary doctor know about it after the fact. Um, it's, it's just very convenient. And so it has worked really well, well for us. So if that's something where you're like, I haven't really bridged the gap and now I'm not sure, you know, if this is strep or not strep, it's, it's worked well for my kids. I'll definitely add that to the Rolodex for sure. It's easy because we have one on campus. So, and you know, like if you end up going down to Texas with IBM for whatever reason, and then you don't feel good when you're down there, like, it's just nice to know, um, that that's possible. And we get all of our prescriptions filled at Walgreens, but when we were at CVS, it pulled all of Abby's prescriptions somehow into the CVS chart. Wow. I do not know how it works, but it knew all the things. Could have pulled it through her uh, OBGYN too. They might've been tied into CV. I don't know. I don't understand electronics. As long as I got it done. Okay, great. I I can't. Okay, so I think the thing that people think about the most when they're hashtag adulting and doing life skills, which is the last thing I want to talk to you about is the housing. Like we want to get our own apartment, get our own condo, get our own Mm -hmm. furniture, not worry about any of the bills or the legal to go along with that, but we want to get our own place. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the section related to housing. Anything surprise you in there? Um, I definitely, one thing that surprised me, um, you know, when you're living in things like a dining, not a dining, a dormitory, or you're just living at home, you really don't think about like rental information if you're renting. So it's kind of like, oh, wait, like utilities and gas and upkeep and cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies definitely surprised me because I don't think about toilet paper. That doesn't count as cleaning supplies, but I don't think about toilet paper. But you know, when it's on a list and a sheet about something that's essential in order for you to function in your own space, it's something that I was like, I haven't thought about things like toilet paper and trash bags and um, paper towels, things like that, that like you actually need to use and use on a daily basis. That's seems so mundane that it seems kind of regular. Um, I'm glad that it's articulated in the binder because I'm like, oh, like I definitely need to go ahead and get on that for sure. So there are like, you guys are all these pages related to this section. So I'll hold them up. We have a couple that are specific to rental information, like writing down, like you're going to read through your lease. You should read through your lease. And you need to just highlight these things are on these pages. Like, are you allowed to have pets? You know, where's the parking? What about the pool? What are the quiet hours? Can you have a grill? Who's your emergency information? These two cheat sheets for your rental information will save you from reading through all the paperwork they're going to give you when you move in. And then welcome to adulting. You need to set up all of your services. You need Mm -hmm. to connect the water, the electricity, the internet, all of those things. And they will all have different accounts and passwords and due dates of bills and all of that. And then I put on the bottom here, your entertainment subscriptions, you know, we got to have the Hulu and all of a sudden I need HBO. I just got that HBO Max and I have to have that now with my my Pandora, my Spotify. And like, I have so many, I need to be entertained a lot, apparently. And then in there, you are going to have electronics. Like you're going to buy a TV. You're going to have a computer. You're going to have a phone. So we have some places for you to write down when you got that information and all your electronics inventory. And then, yeah. Okay. So then the next thing is bathrooms. So when you are a kid in your house, you organize your bedroom, but you don't think about the bathroom. Even if like Moana said, even if you're cleaning the bathroom, like you may have to clean the bathroom, but you don't go to the store and buy the toilet paper and 
the toilet bowl cleaner and all of that kind of thing. So for the bathroom, we have checklists for you, which are related to monthly basics, AKA the things that your parents have always bought you for, for mm -hmm. the bathroom. And then we go through your hair, your face, your medication, your cleaning, just, this is a basic for, if you're going to get, you know, a one bedroom apartment, you're going to have a bedroom plus a kitchen plus a bathroom, plus a living room. It just expands your childhood bedroom into a little bit bigger of a footprint. And if you do everything on this checklist, you'll have pretty much everything that you need. One thing that I'm not sure if we mentioned, but one of the things that comes with the launch binder and the launch program are videos. So you're not only just trying to figure it out on your own, Lisa's there and she's kind of like your reference and you're able to refer to those videos back. You can play them anytime you need. I'm going to do it at your own pace. And that's something that I appreciate it, especially with like walking through the different ways of filling out and like your kind of like extra things. Although this is a template, you have examples of extra stuff that can be used in the template um, that help with just thoughts when you're filling it out. So I really appreciated that. And I think it's good to mention that like you won't be doing this alone, although you will be at the same time. Yeah. So I like one that I remember, which I haven't recorded these in a while was I really went into quite a lot of detail about cleaners. Yes. You sure and did. I don't use very many cleaners. I only use like three <laughs> cleaners. And I explain how I came to these three and why these three and how you could pretty much use them for everything. Like you don't have to have 20 different kinds of cleaners. Um, but then you can do whatever, you know, your parents did or the latest commercial that you saw. But I, I do tell you exactly what I've used in my house as well. Yeah. Being able to have those real life references is definitely something um, that's easy because you can put it and it's easier to recognize when you are doing it and you're going out and you're buying things in the grocery store. Like, oh, Lisa said, use this multi-purpose cleaner. Go ahead and get this. And you're like, okay, there you go. You have yeah. recommendations. They'll do like basically stuff. everything. Or like yeah. everything. <laughs> yes. Um, it, it's almost like a pseudo mom, I think. Mm -hmm. like, like if your mom were to really think through and break down like how they or your dad, how they do things like they have these thoughts. They've just done them for so long. They've never thought about it. Like it's just second nature to them. They don't even think about the fact that they haven't taught you this because yeah. they don't remember even learning it. You know? It's just like when your parents are teaching you how to drive or whoever's teaching you how to drive. Oh my gosh. You, you're thinking about stuff that you don't think about before. Like, oh, wait, like, like why is there turn... not a brake on this side of the car? <laughs> yeah, it's like when you're turning, <laughs> you use a signal. This is how you turn the turn signal. But then you're, when you're breaking it down to someone brand new, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. wait, I have to think about that again. So it's glad that, you know, you're our spiritual driving coach right, right now, right, life right. coach right now. You're on your own for driving. I'm not teaching any more people. <laughs> Okay, then this one, um, I show you guys what is basic clothing. And I really go into a lot of detail about really how do you create your wardrobe? Because up until this point, you've been spending most of your money. If you didn't spend it on food, you spend it on clothes. <laughs> you, you did. And, and, you know, teenagers and 20 year olds have a lot of clothes. And you are usually about the same size when you graduate from college that you were when you went into college. So from 16 to 25, like, your size might change a size or two, but a lot of things you could, you could skinny into things that you wore when you were 16. And, um, but your, your wardrobe changes, like how you present yourself changes, what is popular changes and really deciding like how to let go of some of those past styles, what you want to step into, like, what is your aesthetic that you want to wear? And then how many pieces do you need? You really only need like seven to 10 outfits. If you have seven to 10 outfits, like 10 is the max. You can get away with five um, because the seasons really come around pretty quickly and you're always going to want to add a new pop of color or a new jacket or a new whatever your thing is. So I talk a lot about clothing and establishing an adult wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I'm you know, trying to figure out is building kind of like a timeless closet because, mm. um, especially with social media nowadays, there are a lot of fashion trends that people hop on and hop off very quickly. Um, and because the trends come and go so fast, a lot of the online shops don't have as high quality items because they don't need to be, they're going to be thrown away or given away very fast. So I think having this, you know, five to 10 jeans um, makes you think, okay, if I'm going to get five to 10, I need to make sure that they're quality, they're going to last, um, and they're going to last me, you know, 
a good amount of time so that I don't have to continuously buy things and you know I can stick to my budget. So being able to have that threshold really pushes you to buy things that are more sustainable, uh, number one, but also fit your life so you can see them in a more versatile way. And so I really liked how on the actual clothing basics sheet, it gave you the exact number and you can obviously, you know, make it personal and it's all about you and your journey, but especially when it comes to clothes, it pushes you towards a route of quality over quantity for sure. And clothes are expensive. They sure are. They're expensive. And like to even build up to this wardrobe, it's going to cost a lot of money Mm -hmm. to your point, Milana. Like if you can have four pairs of pants that you love, like that really is amazing. I always had two jeans and then two black pairs of pants. That is a really solid wardrobe because you're going to wear your pants a couple of times. And then I would try to buy two new pairs of pants each season. So in the course of a year, I would buy maybe four total pairs of pants and pants like they could be 40, 60, 80, a hundred dollars, depending on what you like. That's a lot of money in pants. That's for them for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate around that time of year. Mm-hmm. But this is why all of a sudden you're like, thank you for giving me clothes. These are specifically the clothes that I want. And then again, like a nice jacket or two, and then you could go a little bit cheaper on like the t-shirts or, you know, the more trendy stuff when you have some of those solid pieces that will really keep you going through your twenties, you know, when is the time to invest more and when is the time to buy it on the sale rack? Cause you're just going to wear it through this season is mm-hmm. really a different way of thinking about your clothing. Or even like just thinking about the whole concept of fashion, how everything is in a cycle, you can go to a thrift store and you can find something that is completely in the time period that you're at right now, but it's somewhere from like Mm -hmm. 10 years ago that somebody turned in because they were getting rid of stuff in their closet. That's another alternative to have, you know, more of a sustainable option and making sure that you're reducing your carbon footprint and, you know, playing your part in in regards to making sure that our environment's taken care of for your kids. Um, but thrift shopping and going to like secondhand stores as well, if you're comfortable with that, is something that I think is really cool as well. Because especially with things like you said, t-shirts or like uh, workout wear is something that is so, so popular, um, but also is really good for your wallet and the environment as well. So if that's an option you're considering. Yeah. And you can, um, if you have friends that are about the same size, you guys can share tops. I find once you find a brand that fits you on the bottom, especially for women. I don't know about men, but for women, like once you find pants that fit you buy it in all the colors, like that is your store. That is your, your pants. Like I I can't old Navy. I can't fit in old Navy. Like I am a loft. (laughs) I have always been curvy. Even when I was stick thin, I was still curvy. Like I'm just a curvy person. Mm -hmm. And so I need to go to stores that fit curvy bodies. And so, you know what those stores are. You can get tops at lots of different stores, but bottoms, you're probably only going to have one, two, maybe three stores that you can go to find the pants that look and feel good on you. And then just get a couple of pairs and just buy one pair every season or every year. And that will keep those basics going well. And you can maybe borrow some of the tops as well. Yes, 100%, especially with jeans. Like once you find that fit, you know, I love the long fit, slim, high-waisted. You can go ahead and get that in black, white. You can try and get like the khaki version of it for sure. Mm -hmm. And those are some really good just references to have because you can really build so many outfits, all the outfits you need really around your pants. Yeah, agreed. Okay, the other thing that you kind of touched on, but I would like to have us deep dive into is food. So I... For someone who eats all fast food, look at how many printables I give you for food. I give you a lot of printables for food. So I was thinking about this. Food is such a loaded word nowadays. I mean, you have people who eat for different lifestyles. You have people who eat for different, you know, preferences or vegan or or whatever. And you have people who deep eat for different religious regions. And like food is like, Uh, almost harder to talk about than politics, although we are not going to talk politics. So (laughs) I thought, how in the world, like how in the world do you create printables and a program for 20 year olds about taking over their culinary preferences when there are so many out there? And I thought, okay, I have to take this down to as simple as possible. Some people don't like carbs. Some people like paleo. Some people, you know, like don't want anything with GMOs or HGM, whatever. 
you get the idea. Yeah, GMOs, you got it, Lisa, yeah, GMOs. you got it. Okay, and <laughs> I'm eating Culver's onion rings, so clearly we're not taking nutrition advice from you. <laughs> so I thought, what are the basics? And here are the two basics that I built off of this uh, after. What, number one, everybody will agree, protein, fruits, and vegetables are key. So protein, fruits, and vegetables are key. We're going to talk about that. And then the second one is, I don't even care what you eat. I just need you to realize that you eat two different ways. You eat meals and you eat snacks and mm -hmm. you need to systemize each one. So I create for you a little food tracker that you can keep track of your food. But then I have you start with, let's just talk about fruits and vegetables and protein because they are not the food that most people want to eat. Most people want to eat a Big Mac and fries or <laughs> like you, Chipotle. And you're like, there's, there's protein and vegetables in Chipotle. And there right. are. <laughs> there, there definitely are. But if you're going to cook from home and if you're not going to go broke, eventually you're going to have to cook from home and not just eat chips and ice cream because those are not <laughs> fruits, vegetables, or protein. Like Abby and I have this conversation all the time. What is protein? And now she works at a daycare center. You can't bring anything with a nut in it. Do you know how much protein that eliminates? And they have a refrigerator, but no microwave. So anything that would be like a meat protein, you can refrigerate it, but you can't heat it up again. I'm like, what's the point? Like there's almost right. no protein she can take in there and eat because it's going to be cold. Like, ew, it's cold. Luckily she can leave. Um, so your proteins and think through what kind of proteins do you want? How are you going to get your protein? How are you going to get your fruits and veggies? And then we have you build your meal plan from that. What do you think of that? You know, I am looking at it from the lens of someone who still goes to the dining hall. So <laughs> this was really cool to see because even when you're going to the dining hall, you still don't think you're like, oh, you're kind of thinking with your eyes. You're like, oh, this looks good. Let me go ahead and put that on my plate. But when you have like, I need to make sure I have at least these three things, you know, fruits, veggies, and proteins, it's a good template and building block. But also with the snacks as well, you're also thinking about the snacks and what category it's going to go into in regards to the fruits, veggies, and proteins as well. So I think it makes you think about what you're putting in your body a lot more, especially like when you're on the go and you have meetings on campus, let me go ahead and grab this, you know, fruit cup. Let me go ahead and grab these carrots. Whereas you can put that on your planner or your food tracker and you feel a lot more um, happy with your choice um, rather than just getting, you know, some chips or ice cream, like you said before. Well, and protein bars, like I keep protein bars in my purse. So if I'm hungry, I can eat a protein bar that will sustain me for a couple hours. Otherwise I'm going through fast food. Right. When you're hungry, you're hungry and you are going to bust right. your budget and you are going to go get whatever sounds the best. And the longer you wait when you're hungry, the worse the food choice you're going to make is going to be. Oh yes. That is hundred percent true. And I don't know about you, but I get hangry. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I need to do something I, so I can function. I can't function unless I get my little snack. So desperate times call for desperate measures sometimes, you know? And I am not a, I'm not a, I'm not a healthy person. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not the person that's going to give you these videos. And it's like, oh, this is like this uber paleo workout person. No, I, I'm an American. I eat American, but I teach you if you were to break this down and figure out your food for your budget, for your energy level, how would you do that in the most logical way? And I have multiple videos to walk through. Number one, I want you to systematize your breakfast. I don't care if there's like an IHOP menu that is 18 pages long. You and I both know you eat the same thing for breakfast every day, or maybe mm -hmm. between one and two things. There are very few people on the planet that have a different breakfast every single day. Like you go and you have like, what do you eat for breakfast, Milana? I usually eat cereal or bar if I do have breakfast. Okay. And I eat a protein bar. So there you go. Or you can skip breakfast. Totally great option. So when you go to your master food list, I only give you two options for breakfast. Because when you go to the store, you'll be like, waffles sound great. You don't eat waffles for breakfast. So why are you right. buying waffles? Yes. Why and why I always heart? Yes. That is yeah. so and true. Did you remember the syrup? No. So now you have <laughs> waffles, no syrup, and you don't even eat waffles. So now you've wasted right. four bucks. That's right. halfway to a burrito bowl. So yeah. we don't want to do that. And one of the things that's in there as well is the grocery list. And that helps yeah. so much because you know what you have in your inventory that you can actually make your meals with. So you've thought through it all. That's why I was so shocked. Like, oh, wow. All so, this stuff. 
works there together are, and it's cohesive. A lot of adults who are now going through the launch program, they're like, I should be doing this in my grocery. You guys, I, I don't even do our food shopping, but I know how to do it. For lunch, I only give you four options. You probably only need two. And then for dinner, I give you room for eight, but I tell you to pick four. You know that there are foods that you just like to get. And then we teach you, or I teach you, how to make a grocery list, like Milana says. So if you always eat protein bars and cereal, then on your grocery list, you need to have a box of cereal, milk, protein bars. That is all that needs to go on your grocery list. And then I teach you that there are some things that you buy once or twice a year, some things you buy every four, six to eight weeks, some things you buy monthly, and then some things you have to buy weekly. So you need to buy your milk weekly. But if cereal is on sale, you actually get two or three boxes and buy them for the month. So you have a monthly shopping list, which is going to save you money and less impulse buying. And then weekly, you can even stop when you're getting gas and get the milk and go home and add things like that. So we really go through a lot of detail about thinking through what are your food preferences and then what do you buy at the grocery store? I'm thinking maybe I should have Greg take this course. He goes to the store. He buys so much food. He buys so much food. And every week he goes, I did it again. I was like, yeah, you did. But I don't want to go to the grocery store. So I don't, I don't, I don't mess. At least you have plenty of options. Yes. Right. Okay. So we've talked for so long, you guys, I could talk for this even longer. You it has also been get, a minute. I, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, Milana. You know me, I like to talk. Um, <laughs> you also get a starter Sunday basket with the launch bundle. So the launch bundle is this whole binder that we just went through and it has the videos that go with it. And then also we give you the starter Sunday basket, which is only the red, orange, yellow, green, blue slash pockets and a basket. Milano, do you use the Sunday basket? No pressure. And how do you use it as a college student? Well, for the Sunday basket, a lot of it goes with the binder. So yes, I do use it, but I use it more for like a weekly prep because of my living situation right now. So I'm doing things like groom, I'm looking at the things that's like grooming and budget um, and then putting those little files in there. Um, I didn't used to like, a lot of times I'd be like, okay, you can just keep the receipt. But now with like the budget and things like that, I'll go ahead and put that stuff in there. Um, and then I'll put just different records of what I've done throughout the week in the Sunday basket. But I like that you're able to put them in the slash pockets. So it's not overwhelming. It's not just like a drunk, not a drunk, a junk basket. And you actually keep the binder right inside of your Sunday basket, yes. don't you? Like it will fit. The binder will fit in the Sunday basket. And when you're doing this just independently for a single person, those few slash pockets in the launch binder, and then being able to put your mail and your notes, it will all fit in that one box in your dorm room, in your first apartment or wherever you have it. Does the launch in the basket, it comes with a planner, correct? Because mine can't. It doesn't come Yours came with the planner, Milana, because we send you hashtag all of them. Yeah. It does no, not like, come the with planner the planner. Helps, the planner helps a lot too as well. I'm sure you can get a planner anywhere. I would recommend Lisa's planners, but um, the planners go really well because you're able to coordinate the planner with your launch basket. So you literally have month and then you have week by week and you have your goals within that. So you're never losing sight of like your budget goals or your grocery list or your grooming and making sure you're on track every single day as well. Yeah. So you have both the 100 day planner, which is for people in the 100 day program. And then we had a kid's planner that we created during COVID when we knew that kids were going to be at home to kind of like keep them organized. We have discontinued that at this time. We don't have one right now, mostly because there are so many other planners on the market. So I guess I'll have to talk to us if you still want us to do that one. Uh, we currently do not have a plan to have that come out in this, in the school year of 2021, 2022. But I don't know. Talk to us. Maybe we can change our mind. <laughs> Send the inquiries. We'll yes, consider it. Yes. So it used to be that you could only get this. Well, you could buy the launch bundle, but you could only get the training for the launch portion inside of the kids program. But because we feel that this is a great uh, way for people 16 to 25 or older, like anyone in their 20s to really get started organizing that does not need to do the whole 100 day program and also does not need the whole kid program, you can now get the life skills bundle. And in the life skills bundle, you get the launch binder, the starter Sunday basket, and the videos that go along with it. I think the price is 149, but of course I probably shouldn't be telling any details, <laughs> but I think it's 149 and we're going to be launching that starting on June 4th. So Moana, thank you so much. Anything else you wanted to say about, um, hashtag adulting life skills? 
Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me. You know, I always enjoy talking to you. I'm always filled with so much gratitude for the opportunity to experience things like this launch party, which I feel like is so necessary and so needed. Um, I will say one thing. Graduation season is upon us. So if you need <laughs> gifts, this is the perfect gift for a birthday. Any person who's turning that you know they might they might not feel enthusiastic at first yeah. but once they use it this is so priceless to have everything in one kind of binary so you can just grab and go especially with how much our age range is moving this is a great gift so anyone who's you know looking or thinking about gifts you can come here first and it'll be great and it's helped me so much with productivity and thinking about things that I haven't thought about in a while so I feel that much more prepared as an adult and to function in the world of growing and empowerment um as you know becoming a young woman Milana, thank you so much we're super excited about your internship with IBM and your senior year at Miami and Emily and I are keeping our eye on you because we really like working with you in Organize 365. <laughs> you know, I'm keeping my eye on you guys too. We'll be looking at each other. It's mutual. It's mutual. <laughs> I keep saying we're we're such a little company, but do you realize, Milana, when you joined us as an intern, I think we had 10 employees and now we have 15 by the end of June. We'll probably have 18. Like, so maybe we're, by the growing. time you graduate, we might not be that tiny anymore. <laughs> Listen, we talked about quality over quantity. I'm here for it. So <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen the quality firsthand. All right. Well, Milana, thank you so much. Have a great summer and have a great next year school year. Thank you.